we're all gonna die. Can't help him. We are talking Camel Spiders from 2011. And this is directed by legendary B-movie director Jim Wynorski and is produced by Roger Corman. The movie stars Brian Krause, C. Thomas Howe and Jessica Cameron to name but a few. And it's effectively a mix of arachnophobia and tremors, all for a hundredth of the budget. Uh, so let's give you a brief plot synopsis here. Uh, we have a kind of a scene at the beginning of the movie with a conflict in the Middle East and uh, an American soldier is killed and his body is unknowingly kind of inhabited by a bunch of camel spiders. His body is then transported back to America and along the way once they're in America the vehicle that's carrying him has an accident and his body is kind of spewed out in the road and these camel spiders end up kind of getting uh, put out in the kind of the American wilderness and then it's up to uh, this kind of um, army captain played by Brian Krause, his uh, female sergeant and a group of kind of locals to defend their kind of local small dusty town against wave after wave of seemingly massive camel spiders that are ravenous for human flesh. Now what will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss what I think works in this movie. Now this is a low budget movie and I guess you could say it's akin to the likes of the Asylum movies in this day and age. I believe it was made for the, uh, the sci-fi TV channel. So, you know, it does have all the hallmarks of a kind of made for TV movie. It's very kind of cheap CDR, CGI, quickly made, quick production. Uh, for example, the, the sequence in the Middle East at the beginning uh, the actors who play both the Americans, uh, soldiers in, in one scene, also play the kind of the Taliban that they're fighting against in the other scene, just kind of like with headscarves on and things like that. So it's a very kind of quick kind of like turnaround and very kind of cheaply done and things. Uh, but it is kind of a fun movie at least. So there's lots of action in this movie. Now if you can compare this to the likes of the Asylum, so the, the Asylum's modus operandi so to speak is to have lots of talky scenes i always call it conversations in rooms to distract the fact that the running time is mostly filled up with dialogue sequences and not with the kind of the cgi monster of the movie to kind of save money now that is a good way to kind of hide the budget this movie and uh it is kind of like it has a lot of these spiders on the screen they look terrible but there's a lot of them and they're quite plentiful and you know you're never going out for too long without kind of seeing one for very long and for a good amount of time on screen so yes they look not great but at least there is plenty of them on screen so you can't be accused of them you know having too much kind of like uh just boring talky scenes if that's not what you want uh, the movie has got a a large cast with a variety of kind of different characters hold up in this kind of various kind of buildings within this kind of climax and as such because we have a large cast there is quite a lot of people that end up biting the bullet or the fang in this case um now one thing i appreciated that i didn't think this movie would do it does, it does point out that camel spiders aren't actually technically spiders which is true they are not uh and at least that little detail was kind of in the movie which i appreciate which you didn't have to do i suppose um so, you know, there's, there's plenty of action in the movie, lots of kind of gunfights. I mean, they're kind of cheap and, and, and quite frankly terrible a lot of the time. But we have kind of lots of kind of characters who are very kind of like uh, easy to root for. Or you can kind of like, you know, you can boo hiss when they get their untimely uh, demise at the hands of the spiders because they're nasty people or what have you. So there's lots of kind of like uh, stereotypical archetypes of characters, but they're kind of like fun to a kind of a certain degree i will say i think that brian Krause actually takes this movie somewhat kind of seriously um and gives the probably a somewhat earnest performance for him i will say he looks like he's actually kind of getting quite into this role it must be said whilst there are other people 
seem to be taking it less seriously, let's just kind of say. But, you know, Kraut is giving it is all, I suppose. Uh, you know, the movie is quite kind of fast-paced. You know, it's kind of quite quick, and it does follow the kind of the trajectory of the aforementioned, let's just say, tremors and arachnophobia. Now, let's talk about what doesn't work in this uh, movie. I mean, it's incredibly cheap. The This is actually some of the worst CGI uh, you've seen in kind of a uh, low-budget horror sci-fi movie. It really does look like cartoon spiders at times. Um, but that's, in, in a way, I'm a little forgiving of the spiders. But what's even more distracting is the horrible use of green screen, especially when there's scenes in vehicles. I mean, it just looks terrible. It looks terrible. I mean, there's some horrible kind of like... Uh, green screen here and just the general kind of lack of production for example the you know, the uniforms that are um you know our military characters are wearing uh we have this kind of female sergeant that looks like she's kind of more of a stripper than a sergeant it must be said uh so it's not trying to go for obviously a realistic uh, approach i appreciate that but it looks real cheap but let me just kind of say that uh, even sometimes when they're kind of shooting uh, shooting guns, even characters who are supposed to be in the military look like they have no idea what they're doing. It's, it's quite funny at times. Now, the actual spiders themselves, as I say, they're kind of cheap-looking CGI. Yes, you do see a lot of them. That is true. And they do correctly identify them. They're not actually spiders, which is also true. But these things, they're just seemingly massive, plentiful, and hyper-aggressive for no reason. We're given no reason why these things are so like these are like mutant spiders. They a lot of them are like, are like some of them look like they're around four foot and they're huge. But I mean, cow spiders are nocturnal and generally stay away from larger animals um, in real life. But we're given no reason why these things you know, have got so big and you know how they've kind of spread out so quickly. I mean, this is all taking place within like a couple of days and things and. You know, why they seem to be specifically kind of targeting humans, it doesn't really make any sort of sense. I mean, they're not even give, you're not given, I mean, maybe you don't need it to make exact sense, right? But at least you need to give some idea about what, why. oh, there's the, the, the Taliban are doing some sort of chemical experiment. You just needed something along the lines of that, and that would have been fine. And these things have got, you know, doused in some type of chemical or radioactive material that's mutated them. That's all you kind of needed, but no, we just got to accept these things are kind of like, I mean, this is like um, if sharks sprouted legs and started chomping on people in the, on, in the desert. It looks silly. And let's talk about the desert. It's a very familiar desert. If you've seen many kind of low budget movies. Oh, yes. Um, the, the desert of California. Yes, very. We've seen it many times before. Um... The story, like I've said, is, is kind of just a hodgepodge of ideas that you've seen from other movies. Uh, the acting isn't strong. Uh, there's, I think there's maybe too many characters, to be honest with you. It gives you for a high body count, but you know, you, you really fail to connect with someone. And it has this kind of like side plot with a, a separate group of, of kind of survivors running away from these uh, spiders that maybe were reshoots because they have nothing really, they don't ever kind of cross paths. Uh, and this is like where Jessica Cameron's character sort of comes in. It almost feels like we need to pad out the running time. It's have a second group of survivors that are not connected. And, you know, once it's all f done the filming and everything like that. Um, the ending is ridiculous. Uh, the solution to the problem seems uh, excessive to me for what isn't, not, you know, irregular spiders, that, uh, so we're told. But overall, you know, it's a, it's a schlocky film. I mean, uh, Roger Corman, uh, Jim Wynorski, what do you expect? I mean, it's kind of a silly, schlocky, made-for-TV uh, sci-fi quickie. Um, it is kind of fun. I I'll give it that. But is it quality? No. No, it is not. It's not quality, but I feel if you're probably going to watch this film, you probably know that. I would have liked them to have seen used some spiders rather than all CGI, maybe have a couple of shots of actual spiders, but it doesn't do that. And, you know, one thing, the last thing, I guess, the way these spiders kill, they kind of like slash our, our kind of human victims and they sort of kill them instantly and, and seem to, they, look, they act more like kind of like crocodiles, if anything. It's just weird for spiders. 
I'll give it a 3 out of 10. It's pretty kind of like forgettable to be honest with you and uh, ultimately probably not worth most people's time. But it does have a fun element of schlock if you like your B-movie. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Please leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.